My name is Ryan Casey, and I am a developer with Nexus. Uh, we build uh, solutions on the blockchain, especially the, uh, the Ethereum blockchain. And our primary project at the moment is Maker. Uh, quick TLDR on... Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, there we go. A quick TLDR <laughs> on what uh, Maker is. Uh, it is a decentralized credit platform that produces a stable coin that we call DAI. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to be focusing on its potential use as a decentralized cryptocurrency leveraging platform, but technically it is a uh, general credit platform and could be used for uh, a number of things, uh, such as extending lines of credit to other DAOs, for example. And of course, it runs on Ethereum. So you can think of Maker as uh, broken up into three parts. Uh, to keep it simple. First is our decentralized governance model. Second is Keeper, which is, uh, which is a meta miner, and I'll explain what that means in a couple of slides. And uh, the most complex piece, uh, in my opinion, and I think most people's opinions, is our collateralized debt position engine that actually uh, maintains the stablecoin's stability. Uh, so in sequence, our decentralized governance model is centered around a token called MakerCoin. Now, MakerCoin allows MakerCoin holders to vote on actions that the decentralized autonomous organization takes, uh, and votes are weighed by token holdings. So people who have a higher stake in the performance of the DAO have a greater voice. Uh, the holdings are diluted during debt crises, and I'll explain what that means in a couple of slides. And for taking on the risk of shared dilution, there are weekly buy-in burns to, under normal circumstances, continually drive down the supply of Maker and thus drive up the value of it. So every week, Maker offers to buy back some Maker from... The Maker system offers to buy back some Maker token from Maker holders using some of the die in its reserves, and then that Maker is destroyed. And Maker is currently being distributed via crowd sale on our forums uh, and via payment to dynasties, which are essentially just uh, contractors that perform services for uh, the DAO. Uh, we're not planning on doing uh, a broad crowd sale uh, like Augur has done because we're primarily focusing on uh, getting this into the hands of people who are uh, familiar with the system and uh, who uh, could provide, uh, I guess, uh, good governance input. Uh, and then we currently have three comm channels. Uh, first is our forum at MakerDAO.com. Second is our Slack chat at MakerDAO.slack.com. And then we also have a weekly call uh, that anyone can participate in, and that's over TeamSpeak. And to get involved with that, if you want to, uh, you can go to ts.makerdao.com, and that has instructions. Okay, Keeper is our, as I mentioned before, our meta miner, uh, and essentially it's a it's a Docker image, it's a virtual machine. Uh, at the moment, eventually we want to get that onto like a Raspberry Pi, a small computer that people can just buy and plug in and have it perform tasks for Maker and other DAOs, such as uh, the Ethereum alarm, alarm clock or the uh, computation market. Uh, in Maker's case, Keeper provides price feeds for which, make, for which uh, the Keeper is rewarded. And it also provides margin calls in the collateralized debt position engine. And essentially, as I mentioned before, this is like a meta miner because it provides, it provides services that help other DAOs maintain consensus and keep running in exchange for payment from those DAOs. So the third uh, most complex part I'm going to spend the most time on uh, is the collateralized debt position engine, and it's what enables uh, decentralized leveraging uh, credit and uh, the production of this stable coin called DAI. 
Uh, so Dai, of course, is a stable coin, and there have been other attempts at stable coins uh, that we've learned from in producing Maker. Uh, Newbits is a, is a notable one. Um, essentially, when you make a stable coin, you have to find a way to manipulate uh, the supply and the demand in order to keep the price relatively stable. Because uh, otherwise, it fluctuates up and down if you just have a constant, like a, a flat supply, right? Uh, like with Bitcoin, you have a lot of volatility because it's a fixed supply, so as demand changes, uh, the price goes up and uh, up and down. Uh, for now, we have it pegged to the IMF's special drawing rights. Uh, in particular, one die uh, to begin with is going to be worth uh, 0 0.73 SDR, which is approximately what one US dollar is worth in SDR at the moment. Uh, eventually, we could feasibly move the peg to a basket of commodities, but uh, SDR is, is what we're targeting at the moment. Uh, over time, this is a, a new addition since last time I gave this presentation, uh, there's a, now a, a deflationary aspect to DAI where the value of the SDR being pegged will slowly be going up over time in order to reward DAI holders. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with, with what the SDR is, uh, my apologies. I should have started that with, uh, with an explanation. Essentially, the SDR is a basket of global currencies that is rebalanced by the International Monetary Fund every five years based on what portion of global trade is done in each of the member currencies. And this ends up creating a token or an asset that has a stability that's the average of all of the major world, current, world trade currencies. And this, state, and this uh, peg is supported by CDPs, or collateralized debt positions. So collateralized debt positions are simply smart contracts that lock up some amount of capital on the Ethereum blockchain. And in a nutshell, if you put in 150% of that or more of value, you get out 100% of that value uh, as DAI. Uh, and this is how DAI is, is issued. And if you put back in that issued DAI, you get back your underlying collateral. Okay? And this is how, again, DAI issuance is done, and this is how DAI is burned. So if you want to get back your, say, 150 DAI worth of Bitcoin, you're going to have to put in 100 DAI later. Uh, this allows you to do, for example, trustless leverage longs, and I'll get deeper into that over the next few slides. Uh, there is a 2% APR associated with these collateralized depositions. So if you open up a collateralized deposition for 100 DAI, and then you close that one year later, it's going to take you 102 DAI. And the extra two DAI go into maker's reserves, uh, which are used for buybacks and for bailing out bad debt positions. And now collateralized debt positions can technically be closed by anyone. However, if anyone besides yourself closes it, uh, there are some caveats associated. Uh, there is a premium that, have, that they have to pay that has a break-even point at 125% collateralization. More concretely, uh, this chart, I don't know how well you can see it from back there. Uh, these slides are online if you want to check it out later. Um, this chart demonstrates uh, the premium associated with closing out a collateralized deposition that is collateralized at above 125%. Uh, and then peak profitability at 120% collateralization. And that then falls as, you, as the underlying collateral moves toward 100% collateralization. And of course, below 100% collateralization, you have a dead zone where the underlying collateral is not worth closing out the collateralized debt position. So essentially, at 175% collateralization, if I want to, uh, or let's say, where is this? A little under, a little under 175% collateralization. Looks like maybe 1, 165 or something. Uh, there's a 10% premium associated with closing out that collateralized debt position. So if I have 100 die and you issued 100 DAI with 150 DAI worth of Bitcoin, 
I then have to pay 110 DAI to get out. Wait, no, sorry. Uh, I then have to pay. Yeah, I have to pay an extra 10% premium to buy out your underlying collateral. Um, and I don't get the whole underlying collateral, I just get 90 die worth, essentially. Right, so I get 90 die worth of Bitcoin for giving 100 die to your collateralized deposition, and you get the remaining 60 die worth of Bitcoin back. So there's a disincentive to buy Bitcoin in this manner uh, by closing out your collateralized deposition. And then at 125, suddenly it's a break even, so I can do that. If I just want to buy Bitcoin in a decentralized manner, that's a feasible way. If I want to make a profit, I'll wait a little bit until there's some profit and I'll take it. Um, if I'm really daring or there aren't many keepers watching the blockchain, uh, then I might be as bold as to wait for 120% collateralization and net the entire underlying collateral uh, for a profit of 20%. Okay, so more concretely, uh, let's say we have someone named Fu who wants to go long on Bitcoin. So Fu puts in 150 DAI of Bitcoin in the get out 100 DAI. Uh, Fu, because they are long Bitcoin and they want to increase their exposure to Bitcoin, takes that DAI and then goes and, buy more, guy goes and buys more Bitcoin. So now they have increased their exposure to Bitcoin and they can then turn around and open up a few more CDPs if they are very, very bullish on Bitcoin, they want to really, really leverage things, or they can collateralize uh, at above 150% if they're less sanguine. So a few ways this could go for Foo. Uh, first of all, if uh, Bitcoin goes to the moon, say uh, Bitcoin doubles against the SDR, well, Foo can then turn around and sell their Bitcoin for DAI and close out their CDP. This results in 33% more Bitcoin for them. Uh, they could have doubled down and gotten more again, or they could have uh, increased their collateralization and had less leverage, uh, which would have been useful if Bitcoin goes to the floor. So let's say Bitcoin declines by 20% against special drawing, right? Bar's keeper daemon sees that Foo's collateralized deposition is collateralized at only 120%. So Bar sees, takes, uh, takes that 20% um, in Bitcoin, closes out the CDP, and provides additional price support for DAI since that DAI is then destroyed in closing out that CDP. And potentially, if Bar didn't already have DAI, they might have also had to go out and buy some. And then Fu ends up with 33% less Bitcoin because they still have the, the Bitcoin that they bought with their DAI. Uh, realistically, of course, Bar would have settled for less because you would have had a market of keepers all competing to eke out a, the minimum amount of profit necessary, right? To make, it, uh, to make it viable. Let's say Bitcoin really goes to the floor. So Bitcoin gets pwned, nobody wants it, all right? Let's say Satoshi is the NSA or something. So Bar, of course, does nothing. Yeah, it could happen, right? Uh, so Bar, <laughs> it is a theory, isn't it? Uh, Bar does nothing because nobody wants it, and Fu ends up losing 100% because the Bitcoin that they have is useless and, or is worthless, and uh, they have no incentive to close out their collateralized deposition. So the default. Uh, this leaves Dai under collateralized because now you have Dai floating around that's backed by nothing. So what happens here is the maker smart contract system bails out that debt position using DAI in its reserves, okay? Which is great until the reserves run out. So what happens then? Well, remember I mentioned earlier that there were risks and rewards associated with maker. Uh, of course the reward is the being able to participate in the weekly buy and burns, which uh, overall, over time, uh, apply a deflationary pressure to maker and drive up its value for people who don't participate uh, who, or who participate later as opposed to earlier. But this is countered with some risk. If reserves run out, then Maker starts issuing more Maker in exchange for DAI. And this DAI is then used to close out the collateralized debt positions. 
So concretely, uh, if die depreciates against the SDR, then bar can go out by die, close out CDPs, which causes the die supply to drop, which and potentially drives up demand as bar has to go out and get more die potentially to close out more CDPs. And this drives up the value of die back towards its peg. Uh, if die appreciates against the SDR, well, uh, on the one hand, uh, bar can sell die and then buy it back lower. Uh, or bar could sell die and then issue more since on the since on the blockchain, there's an assumption that one die is actually worth its SDR peg. If there is variance between, if there's a difference between the actual value of die and the value of its SDR peg, then there's an arbitrage that could be taken there, um, which ends up driving the value of die back towards its peg. And this is a slide on variables for keepers, but I'm not going to go over this. Right now, uh, to recap, uh, maker holders govern maker based on holdings. Keepers maintain DAOs like maker for fun and profit. And then the collateralized debt position engine maintains the peg. And these are the three pieces of, of maker. Uh, if you are interested in reading the white paper, uh, we have it up at makerdao.com. We also have the forums there. And our code is up on github.com slash makerdao. Uh, Nexus, uh, Nexus itself has a website up at nexusdev.us. And you can contact us via that. And we have code up at github.com slash nexusdev. Nexus development, I think, still forwards to nexusdev. Uh, but this is a, an old slide at this point. So it's a slash nexusdev if, if that doesn't work. And then I am Ray PDX on literally every service that I'm signed up for. And you can tweet at me if you have questions after the meetup. Uh, right now, of course, I will be uh, taking questions uh, from the live audience and the online audience if they're watching. Uh, so I've got the first question, I think, uh, since I'm holding the mic here. Uh, is this up and running? Is, it, do, is Maker a stable coin already? Uh, Dai, Dai is not a stable coin yet. Um, Maker is very, very close to being liquid at least. Uh, so we have people who participate in the crowd sale or various crowd sales on the forums. Uh, some of them have just promises from, from Maker to issue Maker when it's up. Uh, some of them have uh, tokens on the BitShares blockchain uh, called MakerCoin, uh, which is also why I was avoiding saying MakerCoin throughout this presentation, which got a little awkward. but. This is a. Uh, it should be up. It should be up in liquid very shortly. We have a test version up on Morden right now, um, and we just kind of want to kick the tires and uh, make sure that we haven't uh, missed anything. We've had a security audit already, um, and we've done some some off chain testing, uh, so it should be solid. But we're giving it maybe maybe another week um, of just kicking the tires on the blockchain before we deploy it to the main net. So yeah. Um, all right, so in terms of being pegged to the SDR, uh, that's really awesome if I'm like an international investor and I want to um, hedge my risk uh, in all these different markets. But if I'm, uh, say, a U.S., you know, just a U.S. citizen, um, in the terms of purchasing powers, so that, that's going to go, the value of the die is going to be, you know, very unstable in regards to USD. And I didn't know if Maker had any solutions for um, just a, you know, an everyday citizen who wanted, who wanted something that was stable with their specific currency. Yeah. Um, so initially, we did start out as a, making a dollar peg. Um, and theoretically, we still could make one. Uh, but we're focusing on SDR right now because uh, the, cryptocurrency, the cryptocurrency community is uh, international. Um, very broad, so we thought that the SDR would be a better fit um, since it is uh, itself international um, and moves somewhat in relation to uh, you know the value of all the, the world's major currencies, right? 
So you know, we have a lot. We have people in China that are interested in this. We have people in uh, Europe uh, that are interested in this, and uh, we we need to you know, it's, it seems like a good compromise anyway. At the very least, we're starting with uh, an SDR peg that is equivalent to about a dollar. So um, we have at least done that for, for the U.S. citizens. So what's the motivation overall in being part of MakerDAO? And, and when I'm a part of it, or if I'm a part of it, am I holding MakerCoin, or am I holding DAI? So if you are interested in assuming the risk and reward uh, of helping make Maker, or helping govern Maker, I guess, um, and if you want to invest in Maker's success, I guess, uh, is a better way of putting it. If you want to invest in Maker Success, then you buy Maker. If you just want a stable coin, uh, you just want something that's going to hold its value, um, then use Dai. Uh, and there is a, again, there's a deflationary element that gets adjusted uh, to further help maintain the peg, um, and also to theoretically over time uh, increase the value of Dai. So. If you want more risk and potentially higher reward, then Maker. If you want something that's more stable, then Die. Uh, so there are two tokens. I hope that was clear enough. Uh, all right. Yeah. This is a really basic question. Um, what makes you? You mentioned Newbits earlier, and I use Newbits on a daily basis. Yeah. So let's touch base on that. What makes you better than? What makes what makes us better than Newbits or new shares? Right. Uh, so my, my understanding of uh, new bits is that it's essentially is a weird way to say it, but it's kind of like a it's kind of like a distributed central bank, um, where you have a set of people who can issue um, and destroy new bits. Right. Those are the new shares holders, um, but it's a limited set. Uh, the thing that appeals to me about Maker is that it opens up that set so that uh, literally everyone can issue or destroy DAI. And it, the really elegant and interesting thing for me is that it, uh, it aligns incentives so that you can do that, right? So you can have random strangers on the internet um, maintaining the peg uh, as opposed to uh, a set of uh, a couple hundred, I think, uh, actually you know, have voting and issuing. And I don't know, it seems a lot more dynamic um, and more likely to maintain a peg than a uh, you know, a set of, a, I guess, a couple hundred, oh, which is actually pretty big. I mean, uh, when you think about it, but, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a glutton for decentralized. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a glutton for decentralization, I guess, so. Yeah. Hey, I, I got two questions. Um, the first one is, What's the mech? Who, who has control of the collateral? So is that like a, is it like an exchange? The exchange is holding the collateral, or when it when the collateral gets confiscated, you know, is that a hundred percent? How does that work? And the second second piece is is I'm confused about either interest rates or um, appreciation, anything that's built in transaction fees when it's tied to the SDR because the SDR has a fixed range, and if, it, if something's going to appreciate and the SDR isn't appreciating, then that's going to move it off its mathematical value system. So I was trying to figure out how, how those two things went, went together. I think that's DAI, right? Yeah, D DAI is the stable coin. Uh, I'm not sure I understood the second half of the question. Uh, Did you say that the DAI was going to appreciate or have an interest component? Yeah, so the, the idea is that uh, over time, um, the value that DAI is pegged to uh, rises. So initially, it's pegged at 0 0.73 SDR. But then uh, over time, uh, that goes up to like you know, 0 0.75, 0 0.77, uh, 0 so, 0.8. So since the SDR is, no matter what it is, since it's pegged to the SDR, yeah. that's basically like saying, if you buy it, you're going to make 2%. Uh, yeah, basically, um, that's my understanding. Honestly, the the whole uh, deflationary component of it is is uh, relatively new to me. I gave this presentation about a month ago, and uh, this was uh, that part wasn't part of it. Um, but my understanding of it is that 
that's how that works. So, uh, then, so then that would mean long run, it would always trade two percent higher than the SDR. It would have a new valuation that was fixed. Right. Like instead of being equal to the SDR, it would be the inflated value. Right. So yeah, in the in the white paper, it mentions like a three percent as an example. Um, so year over year, you'd have like a it'd be worth three percent more uh, SDR. Um, so, but as far as the, the custody of funds of collateral y you mentioned initially, um, so you actually lock up the, the asset um, on the blockchain using code uh, called a smart contract. So uh, unless there are you know, certain l logical uh, things satisfied, uh, it's literally just on the blockchain. It's not held by any party. It's, um, it's locked away on the blockchain in code. Uh, I don't know how to, I'm speaking to a diverse audience here, so I'm not sure how technical to get about that, but uh, essentially you have the keepers uh, who provide price feeds, um, and that allows, uh, that allows the maker system to know the value of DAI, uh, or at least to know the value of SDR, um, based on uh, this consensus model from all these inputs, and uh, then that's used to figure out if this smart contract uh, should release its underlying collateral, it's locked up on the blockchain, um, given the amount of die it's been sent, or how much of it it should, re it should release, or if it should release any. Um, so you said if you hold MKR, that's to invest in the future and success of Maker, right. and also to participate in its governance. Um, what what decisions are you participating in? So, right now, the only thing in the white paper that's mentioned is basically, uh, let's see, if the peg is within a certain amount, you can tweak it uh, to like under under 1%. Um, we haven't actually used the voting mechanism yet for MakerDAO, and at this point, it's the, the governance is theoretical, I guess. The, the there aren't any hard decisions where we've said yes. This this sort of decision will be uh, made by maker holders by via vote. Um, this is something that we should definitely uh, f fix down. But uh, I, I speak mostly for um, yeah. This is a this is a thing I've heard from the founders. Um, this is a thing we're going to do, and that's about all I know about that. So. Well, it sounds good, so. Yeah, it sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I know the guys, and, uh, I, and I think it's uh, something that'll come to fruition, so. But uh, at that point, you know, it's, it's trust, I guess, so.